just got back from National Corvette Museum Motorsports Park. What a long word. Biggest problem about it was the vendor. Everything else was amazing. Yeah, cue the music. Unfortunately, I didn't record a lot because as a two-man team, uh, even when I thought that Thomas would be racing and I'd be filming, no, it wasn't happening. I'm either watching him, making sure if he needs something or something happens, he comes in. Radios are garbage, uh, so that's definitely something on the whiteboard to put that up. Driving there, a breeze. It's not even that bad at all. Um, I think we stopped one time for fuel. We got there real quick. Uh, we left at like 6 a.m. We got there around noonish. Uh, and this is Bowling Green, Kentucky from Atlanta. Uh, zero issues. Uh, we immediately, I see my name on one of the garage doors because I rented a garage because I thought I had an added option. And for an easy $200, don't have to set up a tent. You got power, you're in the shade. Uh, if you have more people, it's not so bad. But like, man, we're packing like last minute. Two dudes, inexperienced, you know, many hands make light work then the complete opposite is true as well so i'm like just trying not to remember every tool i brought you know packing tents on top of that i mean i'm glad i remembered to bring two chairs um but packing tents you know setting that up man it's nice to just have a garage roll the car in dump the tools out which we just loaded in all of these you know to go boxes you know i really wish i could uh roll in a toolbox and all that, but I just don't have that kind of capacity right now until I get a trailer that can actually uh, carry uh, that kind of stuff. Because right now, Jerry Yang was nice enough from uh, Jerry Yang Racing Fabrication, was nice enough to let me borrow his trailer. Huge savings on expense there. That's ah, a couple hundred bucks. It's another couple hundred dollars to rent a U-Haul trailer, and it's for four days, not three days, because you have a day of travel, you want a day to load it up so it's ready to go. I had to take it to get a new window in so it's just like never any expenses so that was nice of him and good on the budget uh, it just being the two of us which is great because one I don't have to worry if the car breaks that you know people aren't happy they didn't get to drive because me and Thomas we built the thing pretty much uh, secondly so much more drive time oh my god I I only want to run teams of like three, I think now, because I just want more drive time. Oh, it was so great. I had so much fun. Uh, grand total, we had 144 laps done, which is really good. I mean, this is a good shakedown. Car was running great uh, until just the very end. Um, and I think it's ready. I can like actually start pushing to get donations and stuff like that to generate some revenue for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. A lot of people, I had one person, just a friend, be like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you 10 cents a lap. That's nothing really. But when you knock out 144 laps, that's $14.40, baby. So if we get some more people like that, 14 bucks, that's, that's not gonna break anybody for the most part. Um, but, you know, it adds up. You know, if I can get enough people to where we're like, generating you know 10 bucks a lap that'd be great man that'd be like 1440 bucks to st jude's which is a good deal also in case people are wondering if this is some kind of scam there's a link that you actually click and you just do the donation straight to st jude's through my fundraising campaign it's not like you send me the money when we started we started the day lining up and immediately the battery is dying and something's wrong luckily we had a really quick fix it was a grounding wire and man, the team next to us jumped in. Uh, I can't, oh, his name is Ben. He looks just like Ben Affleck, but uh, Loose Nug Lug Nuts Racing was uh, one of our neighbors. And then the, uh, our other neighbors were, um, oh man, who sings Achy Breaky Heart? I can't remember their team name now, but someone will put it in the comments. Anyway, um, yeah, man. So uh, Ben from Loose Lug Nuts Racing uh, hops over with a multimeter instantly trying to like, you know, figure out what's wrong with our car. I mean, nothing more warming than going to Lemons. Everybody's borrowing each other's tools and asking and like with a smile on their face. And it's such a nice community of like, you know, people are there to compete. I mean, loose lug nuts, I think they're like top five every time if they're not winning. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you know, they're they're helping an amateur team like us, you know, instantly. I didn't even say anything, you know, I think, Five other strangers has helped push the car back in. Uh, we got that fixed. Thank God I brought my battery charger as I always do. 
charged it up, uh, found that grounding wire. She sparked to life and we got her out there and uh, immediately Thomas gets two black flags in six laps. It is you dummy, two black flags. Where are you going? It is raining slightly and I probably should. I let him go first just because, you know, Thomas has been working on his car for a long time. And uh, I just wanted him to get out there and have a taste before God something goes wrong. Uh, but it didn't. Um, but it was raining slightly and he spins the car twice. He got two black flags, six laps. I only, I only caught him on the second one. He's like, yeah, I'm over here uh, in the penalty box. Uh, he called me on the radio. I guess it works within 10 feet or something. And uh, I go over there and uh, Eric Root is scolding him for the second time. And uh, he's like, so what'd you do? You spun again? And I, and I look over and I'm like, you Muppet, you've spun out twice already? And Eric Root just loves the word Muppet. So I'm gonna try to make him some stickers for uh, Road Atlanta for penalties. But uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, Eric's like, all right, you guys need to switch drivers. So uh, Thomas drives around and we swap in and uh, you know, we're going through the whole rigmarole of swapping drivers, which is not easy in our car because I'm very tall. Thomas is, uh, Thomas is not short, but he's so lean that, uh, you know, you can hug this dude and like your arms just go through, through yourself. And so he's like, dude, you're too fat. I'm like, Thomas, uh, my waist size is like a 38 and I'm six foot nine. I'm like, and he's like, well, I'm a 32. I'm like, so anyway, so we're having a lot of seatbelt issues, especially since we switched to this new Sparco setup. But uh, we work through it, and I, I, I really want to remount the seat anyway. I move, it moves so far back, even I don't need that much distance. Um, it is nice for getting in and out, though. But uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna move it forward, and I'm gonna raise it a little bit so that when you do move it up, you're actually elevating yourself as well for the people who are a little bit shorter. Seatbelts, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I've got to look at it because you want it mounted to really, you know, a nice beefy metal. Yeah, you can put plates behind all that stuff and I might have to do that. It's just a lot of work. Um, but I don't really have too much work to do on the car. She's worn and great. I'm about to do some maintenance. Uh, next video, I'm going to be going through everything and I'm going to pull the plugs, change the fluids, see if there's, you know, I built this engine. I'm not a master engine builder. You know, I tried my very best, but, uh, um, you know, we'll see if there's any copper and the, and the oil filter and all of that, and uh, hopefully there won't be. Brakes are phenomenal. Uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about the car. So, uh, car issues, well, we have two. But the first one was at the very beginning, and the second one was at the very end. The first one was the grounding wire. So, other than that, it was great. Uh, temperatures, I think maximum got up to like 204 degrees, which is pretty good. Shout out to Anthony from uh, Golden Rotor Racing for. Uh, constantly uh, whispering in my ear advice. Although I don't take all of it all the time, um, he did tell me to get uh, oil uh, thermostats and replace them with uh, ones that opened earlier. So I think that's helped a lot actually. Um, other than that, my plug held really well. So temperatures are fine. Uh, our biggest issue out there was fuel siphoning. I think there's something wrong between the passenger uh, saddlebag tank and the driver's side and it wasn't pulling fuel and we get fuel cut out. Either that or we're really low on fuel actually and the fuel float is jammed up or something and it's telling us we have half a tank. So that might be it too. But um, we were only getting, uh, I think we were putting only 10 gallons in at a time because we weren't sure how much fuel was supposed to go in there. And it was reading half a tank, but it would take 10 gallons. So I'm not sure what happened, but I actually like, it cut out on me on the track at one point, right before the checkered on day one. Like I run out of gas. So I don't know what the issue is, but you can tell first because it starts cutting out as you're doing sweepers and stuff like that. So in my mind, I'm like, ooh, fuel cell. And so I do research, it's like, cost me like $2,500 to put a fuel cell in here. Not cheap, uh, at least for a good size one with pump lines, all that stuff. It is not cheap. Um, other than that, it's running great. Day one, uh, I think Thomas is running uh, three minute, 40 second lap times. I'm running about, I think, two minute and 50 second lap times. Uh, Thomas's first time, he's still, Thomas claims that he can never feel the car and when it's about to give, but he says the same thing about sim racing. I just think that Thomas is so far away from the actual edge that that's why he's not feeling anything. Um, but that takes practice and I'm not trying to give him a hard time. He did great out there. Uh, the number one objective is to bring the car home safe. 
And yeah, he didn't probably do that either, but he, his, his heart was in the right place. So anyway, day two, we get out there. Uh, Thomas goes first. Weather was beautiful. Besides a little bit of light rain uh, that only lasted like an hour, it's gone by 10 o'clock. Thomas goes, I go. Thomas goes again. And uh, while Thomas is uh, looking in his mirror to let people pass, he actually drifts out a little bit to the left, catches the grass, spins out, and pushes our brand new wooden diffuser that's helping to force air into the radiator. Uh, he snaps it and the diffuser breaks and it goes like this and the back of it goes into our radiator. So as Thomas drives by, he doesn't realize it yet, but after his, his third black flag and I see him drive away, I can see there's water on the ground. So it had to come from somewhere. So I go ahead and I, uh, we take it back and the radiators just so uh, that is definitely something we had to replace uh, I got a couple ideas about what we're gonna do with that but I'll talk about that in another video so other than that that was the race so 144 laps uh, everything was smooth um, I felt like at first when I was driving it I was shifting at like seven because I just felt like the car was running out of steam uh, and it wasn't really doing anything at eight or nine then later when I was driving uh, it would feel like, you know, it would dip right before seven and then pick up and it was like VTEC was kicking in. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna just wire open the last valves uh, for the, these runners or what, but it wasn't working very good. I really just wanna run a, a separate ECU. Um, but the only problem is I need to find a ABS module uh, that's made by, there's two of them. I need the first generation one that doesn't have DCS. Um, anyway, not to get too technical about that, uh, yeah, that was uh, most of our race, and it was ah so much fun. I mean, day one, I mean, first 20 laps, you're just getting used to it. Uh, after that, you know, you just, uh, you're like, okay, and then slowly people are not passing you as much, and then you start to pass a few slow cars, and uh, it just got better and better and better, and I cannot wait for the next race. I'm so pumped. Um, I just want more speed. I mean, we could outbreak everybody, I felt like. Uh, the brakes on this car are phenomenal. Wear and tear on the brakes, they almost look new. I want to say like, look like 5% were used, and I'm braking as hard as I possibly can uh, last minute. They're just so big. I mean, our rear brakes compared to some of these other cars were bigger. I came, I'm looking for 17 inch wheels to run on this thing, 17 by nine and a half. Uh, just, it's hard because a lot of them don't clear the brakes. And then when you have them vented like this, uh, it keeps them cool, and uh, man, it was they were really good. Like, like hold on for dear life, because uh, we're about to slow down the earth a little. Uh, I think that's all. The, so power, not really there. Handling was great. So my top speed, maybe down the straight, one five, one ten, if I got a really good run uh, without traffic. But I was look. There's two big sweepers in it, and I looked down when I was doing those. And I was doing 85, so our handling is there, but our top speed is just not there. It just like, it just, car just feels like it's putting in work. It's not really accelerating much at all, so. Um, but uh, yeah, so still some things to improve on, but really my number one priority is just keeping her consistent, running, no issues, having a good time. And speed will come later, you know? Kind of want to build another car anyway, but yeah, man. As much shit as I've given her, she's been all right. So uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I got some footage of me driving. Unfortunately, it was last minute, it was so busy. I'm gl so glad. I was gonna mount it to my helmet, I wish I did, but Thomas mounted it to the roll cage with zip ties. And it actually worked really well, which I hate it when Thomas is right. But it worked great. But the only problem was it was mounted too low. So you can really, can't really see cars over the dash very well unless there's an elevation change, so it's kind of boring, um, which sucks because I had some really good footage. I'll try to put some in there and I'll chop it up so any of the, the sections that look good. And then after that, uh, I can leave a secret link at the end of this video if you want to see the entire uh, segment. Funny how it just cuts off when Thomas gets in right before his crash. But uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm gonna go edit this, and then next video I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a walk through this bad boy and see what we find, and hopefully everything's good and there's no metal in the oil and 
Spark plugs look good because Lord knows I'm running out of money for this bad boy. Uh, yeah, other than that though, good times, good times. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please consider hitting that like, follow, subscribe button. If you want more current photos, you, we I normally dump a lot on Facebook, on our Facebook page, or and I'll show some more up-to-date stuff on our Instagram, which is ATL underscore Riot. Um, I think I changed that from what it's actually listed in the video, but I probably need to rebrand anyway, considering that when we have riots here, I get the wrong kind of publicity, and it's kind of taken away from other people's causes. All right. So, I'm out of here. Stay tuned, kids. You do!